Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the June 15th, 1999 Town of Cape Elizabeth Planning Board meeting. First item on the agenda is approval or amendments to the minutes of the previous meeting. Comments from the board, please. None. Move to accept as written. We have a motion to accept. Second. With a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Correspondence in this week's meeting packet. The Mill et al. versus the Town of Cape Elizabeth. Reich et al. versus the Town of Cape Elizabeth. Costa Community Services Study Fact Sheet. Memorandum from R. Malley in regards to St. Albans Church. Draft Memorandum from the Planning Board in regards to variance amendments. Letter from Mr. and Mrs. Johnson in regards to the Scout House. Roe versus the City of South Portland decision. Hazardous Mitigation Planning Workshop. Zoning News of May 1999. On the podium this evening for our consideration, a letter from Donald Bonoff, Chairman of the St. Albans Building Committee, in regards to financial capabilities of their current construction plan. A letter from Michael Hill, Town Attorney. A letter from Scott Belfour. And a notice of the Greater Portland Council of Governments and PACs invites you to a planning issues forum. I didn't receive a copy of the Community Services Studies Fact Sheet. Under old business, Sprague Subdivision Approval Extension, request by the Sprague Corporation to extend the final subdivision approval granted for the Sprague Subdivision by the Planning Board on March 16, 1999, for 90 days. Section 16-2-4, paragraph F. Comments from the Board? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Before we move to that issue, uh, would it be appropriate for me to comment on the Roe case since I was the one that asked Maureen to add it into the file. Uh, Go right ahead, sir. Thank you. Uh, you may recall that at our uh, last workshop on June 1st, uh, we took up the issue of the variant standard amendments to the zoning ordinance. My position is clearly stated in the uh, last sentence of the fir first paragraph. There is significant case law. I'm, I'm, I'm reading from uh, the notes here. There is significant case law defining the meaning of undue hardship, and the town may want to wait until some case law is created on the meaning of practical difficulty. Uh, the very next day in the mail, I received a copy of the Supreme Court's decision in, the, uh, in this case, and it's right on point. Um, it's so, so close in point that I think it should be uh, brought to uh, this board's attention. The facts in this case are that Nancy Buck in uh, South Portland uh, started building her home in 1996. She hired a contractor and a designer to build and locate the home. The contractor set the house back uh, 20 feet instead of 12 feet because of an erosion problem. This violated the 20-foot uh, front setback requirement by one foot. Uh, the zoning board granted her a variance, and the Supreme Court, uh, the unanimous Supreme Court, overruled the uh, zoning board, held that Buck had failed to show that the land could not yield a reasonable return unless the variance was granted. Now, the definition of failure to yield a reasonable return is very difficult. It means the practical loss of all beneficial use of the land. The Chief Justice went on to point out that if Ms. Buck had gone to the board uh, before constructing the house and asked for the variance, 
they would not have had to give it to her. She could just have made the house a little bit smaller or moved it back on the lot. And that now that the house is substantially completed, uh, she can still tear down the wall, even though it's going to be cost in, in excess of $10,000, and uh, get within the zoning sec setback requirement. Now, interesting to note that the Chief Justice went on to say, went on to uh, review the legislative changes that are before this board or were before us on the last uh, session. And he said that, um, he, after giving the legislative history, he said clearly the town or the city may adopt this new standard. If the new standard had been adopted in, uh, in the Buck case, then the zoning board would have been able to balance the equities of the money that Buck would have had to spend with the harm done to the neighbor who was bringing the case because of the one foot uh, step over of the um, setback requirement. Since South Portland did not adopt this new standard, the court will not impose it by judicial fiat. Uh, in light of this decision, I think that uh, if the same thing were to happen in, in our town, it would be uh, extremely bad, particularly in light of this case that sort of puts us on notice where the uh, courts are coming from. I don't know if it's appropriate, and I leave it to the chairman, but in light of the Roe versus South Portland case, I would ask that this matter be assigned uh, to the next session, uh, next workshop session, and that we <coughs> rethink our position on this. But I don't know if that's an appropriate motion or not. I think it's appropriate. Any objections? Consider it done. Thank you, Al. <coughs> Under old business, Sprague subdivision approval extension. Maureen, would you like to fill us in? Sure. Uh, at the last workshop, the board signed a large number of recording plats and uh, asked me if I had checked them, and, and I said no, and I thought about that later on and decided that I probably should have checked them, and I laid them out here on the floor behind Mr. Murray, and uh, they have no match lines on them, and lo and behold, uh, they do not present a complete picture of all the land that was approved as part of the Sprague subdivision. There's a big hole in the middle. Not all the lot lines are depicted for all the lots that are included in the subdivision. Um, I spoke with uh, the applicant's representative. Uh, I feel strongly that the board needs to get a record, set of recording plats that clearly depict all the lot lines of all the lots in the subdivision. Um, they countered that they are intending to record a boundary survey plan. And what we've come up with is that we've taken the boundary survey plan, uh, called it a recording platinum boundary survey, and added a signature block to it. And I have those plans here tonight for you to sign. Uh, the only uh, wrinkle in this whole system is that we will then be recording the plans you've already signed, which are at a scale of 1 to 100, and recording as a recording plan and a boundary survey, the plans that are at a scale of one to, I believe, 200. So we have many plans that uh, more than one plan covers a single area. In order to deal with the potential problem of having two plans showing different things in the same spot, we've added a note to the new recording plats that say that the, the, the scale, the smaller scaled subdivision plans are the ones that will control in case of any conflict. And I have taken the new recording, the new recording plats, and laid them out. And with one minor exclusion, they do represent the entire subdivision. So what we recommended to the Sprague Corporation is that, uh, because of this problem, uh, because we were not sure we would be able to get everything signed and recorded by June 14th, which would have been the last day that their approval was valid, that they asked for another 90-day extension with the intent that. You sign the plats as soon as possible, and then they will record them. 
Discussion by board members? Mr. Emery. I won't be voting on this matter as I've recused myself during the entire proceeding. <coughs> Nancy. I, I, I move that uh, we give the 90-day extension. I don't think we have any choice in the matter. Second it. Second. Would somebody like to read the motion that Maureen prepared for us on the memorandum concerning this issue? Uh, be it ordered that, based on the request of the applicant and the plans and materials submitted as part of the approval granted on March 16, 1999, the request of the Sprague Corporation to extend for 90 days the final subdivision approval of the Sprague subdivision located south of Bowery Beach Road and approved by the Planning Board on March 16, 1999, be granted. Second. Second. Thank you. And moved and seconded. Is there further discussion by board members? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Next item, Mr. Murray, Bluestone Quarry Earth Materials Permit Renewal. For those of you in the audience or listening at home, if it appears like we're Allowing this matter to go through very quickly, the majority of the board has this entirely memorized as it's an annual permit and it comes up every year. And Mr. Murray is well schooled in presenting it to the board. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Jim Murray. I am president of Bluestone Quarry, uh, located at 1019 Sawyer Road in Cape Elizabeth, and I am requesting the annual permit uh, for 99. I've checked all the boundaries. Uh, the fence is intact. The no trespassing signs were up the last time I looked. Um, to my knowledge, there has been no complaints from the neighbors and no complaints from the police department. Anything in this year's file? Maureen from the neighborhood? No, and I did uh, speak with the police chief, and there have been no, comp no uh, complaints this year. Thank you. <clears throat> Further discussion by the board? Mr. Parkhurst. I think if I remember correctly, last year we asked um, the question, um, could this be renewed for a two-year period? And I think the response was, it's in the ordinance, you can't. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> give me credit for trying. <laughs> <clears throat> Steve? <Steph? clears throat> Motion for the board to consider findings of fact. Number one, the applicant operates Bluestone Quarry located at 1019 Sawyer Road. Number two, this facility requires a special permit to remove, remove earth materials under section 19-8-5. Number three, the facility will conduct blasting and transport operations which could endanger the public health, safety, and welfare. Number four, the applicant has substantially addressed the earth material permit requirements in section 19-8-5D. Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Leland Murray for renewal of an earth materials permit at Bluestone Quarry, located at 1019 Sawyer Road, be granted by the Planning Board for a one-year period beginning June 15, 1999, and ending with the regular June 2000 meeting of the Planning Board, subject to the following conditions. Number one, the applicant shall maintain a fence at least three feet high around the perimeter of the site. Number two, the applicant shall maintain comprehensive general public liability insurance with coverage not less than $500,000 per person and per occurrence for bodily injury or death and not less than $100,000 per occurrence for property damage. <clears throat> Number three, no operations shall be conducted at the quarry on Saturdays, Sundays, or holidays except that stone may be loaded and trucked from the site on Saturdays. No machinery or equipment shall be operated before 8 a.m. or after 6 p.m. on any day, except that loading of trucks shall only take place between 7.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Number four, all blasting shall be performed by or under the direct personal supervision of a person qualified, experienced, and regularly engaged in such work, and shall be done in a manner which will not endanger the health or safety of any person or damage any real or personal property on or off the quarry site. Representatives of the applicant shall be present at the time of the blasting operation. 
<clears throat> Number five, the applicant shall keep accurate records of any and all blasting operations, including times and dates of such operations, and information on size and placement of all charges. The schedule for any blasting and drilling shall be submitted by the applicant to the public safety dispatcher at least seven days prior to the commencement of the work. The schedule shall include the name of the drilling and or blasting subcontractor who will perform the work and a, cert uh, and a certificate of insurance for such subcontracting. Drilling and blasting shall be scheduled for no more than one half day at a time. Number six, the applicant shall make a reasonable attempt to notify Cape Elizabeth residents along Sawyer Road and Stillman Street in the vicinity of the quarry prior to any blasting operation. Number seven, no more than 10,000 cubic yards of material should be removed during the term of this permit. Number eight, if the code enforcement officer finds at any time the health, safety, or welfare, welfare of area residents or property is threatened by quarry operations, he or she is authorized and directed to order that all work at the site be suspended immediately and to require the operations be resumed only after further action by the planning board. Second. Thank you. <laughs> may, I, may I ask a question? Certainly. Go right ahead, Nancy. I checked over the um, part of, of the... Um, I think it's a zoning ordinance that relates to this um, activity. And do you have plan? And I drove by the site today, Jim. Do you have any plans for restoring um, the site? I mean, I know you blast every year. Do you have time to restore what you blast the year before? Well, <clears throat> our intentions are when we we have to stay within 100 feet of the property line. So when we're done that inside perimeter. Then we'll start sloping the 100 foot perimeter or even <clears throat> putting it back. Okay. Probably sell it off a house lot. Okay. Further discussion? Tom. Mm -hmm. the, the board will uh, endure a bit of uh, levity. Uh, this is my last term on the board. This is my ninth year, and I've always enjoyed uh, Jim's coming before the board. In fact, a couple of years ago, I paneled the board to see who had the courage to vote against someone who has a blasting uh, license. So perhaps uh, it would Careful. be... Careful. Uh, the judge would, sitting there. <laughs> perhaps it would be appropriate on the finding of facts to add an institutional number five that the board acknowledges that the applicant is licensed to handle explosives and, and is a pyrotechnic technician. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> I'll withdraw that. <clears throat> Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Thank you. It is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Next item, St. Albans Church. Give Maureen just a minute to take down one plan and you can put up yours. <laughs> Maureen, is there anything you need to add before we begin? Uh, nope. Okay. The applicant can just identify themselves and begin, please. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm Nancy Barbe from Barbe Architecture and Preservation. And with me tonight is Anthony Munch from Anthony Munch Landscape Architecture and Don Bonoff, who is the chair of the building committee for St. Albans. Um, we're pleased to be back before you again. We met with you about a month and a half ago for a workshop and appreciate the comments you had at that point to help guide us through the process. Um, as you know from the workshop, from those of you that were able to attend, we're, we're looking at uh, the present site with four buildings on it. The, existing church that was built around 1953, parish hall built in the early 60s, the rectory, turn of the century, um, summer cottage that's been converted to the priest residence, and a two-car garage. Um, what we're asking for tonight is to remove the existing parish hall and to build a new parish hall attached to the existing church. 
to better facilitate the use of the, um, the, the church's use of the property for, for its intended use. And part of the problems that they've faced in the past with the, with the parish hall being detached is la low use in, win in the winter. People don't go from one to the other, so people go out the door at, for coffee hour, they're gone. And so trying to um, foster fellowship by bringing the buildings closer together. Also, they looked at trying to make the parish hall accessible um, to the handicap and found out that it was very costly and difficult to do. Um, and the classrooms are below grade, which is not a good situation for small children. So their thought is to basically replicate the existing functions in, that are presently in the parish hall and in the new parish hall. Um, as I mentioned, the, the property has, has um, four, four buildings. Um, the trend in the Episcopal Church and in many churches is that the rectory is becoming less and less um, necessary for the priests. Priests like to have their own residence and develop equity over time. So there's some thought that in the distant future, or not really known at what point in the future, um, they may not be using that for the priest residence. So the plan that we'll present tonight will show a potential future lot for the rectory separate from the church and parish hall. We're also talking about removing the garage in part of the plan. Um, one of the key, key issues is parking and driveway and access. And just to briefly review where, where we were with that, um, the present parking lot is up behind the church and is accessed both off of Shore Road through a driveway with a, a loop and through one entrance off of Oakhurst. The lot is paved, but it's unstriped, and because of its, I guess that's a trapezoid, trapezoidal shape, it's hard to really get any water out of it. We've done um, about two months of parking counts during, this, during the weekend um, services, and it found that the parking lot will hold about 25 cars, and about 10 cars park in the driveway. So what we're looking at is trying to replicate that and, and add as many parking spaces as we can physically add without getting into um, blasting ledge to any degree. It's, it's the, the site's very ledgy. In fact, there's, we're, we're somewhat concerned that there's ledge lurking under places where we don't want to see it. But we're trying not to take the parking lot too far into this huge ledge outcropping. We're also trying to preserve the open space on Shore Road to try to keep it consistent with a comprehensive plan with just the sense of greenery and, and green open space along that scenic drive by not filling that with parking. So one of our goals is to, is to try to keep this, the sense of the site that's already there and, and make it more desirable than it presently is. Um, so you, you have a lot of this in writing, so I won't repeat it all. Um, we're, we're not, we've, we've tabled the question for a daycare center um, with the zoning board because it was too early to determine how we were, the owner was, was uncertain of the hours of usage and how, who would operate it and how that would happen. So we put that table, we actually withdrew it from consideration. So we'll be coming back for that probably next year. Um, we've actually shown in the new plan a play area, but there's no, there's no use now for that. There's no approved use, I should say. So we're still, we're still planning as if it's going to be there in the future. Can everyone see this plan from there? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so you'll see that the new plan discontinues the use of this new road and concentrates the parking behind the church and improve and opens it up, adds, adds landscaping along Oakhurst Road because there's just an asphalt curve there and it's pretty awful. So it's, it's cleaning that up and, and making it more residential and really um, Also planning a one foot one foot tree up at the top corner of the neighbor's boundary and a couple of trees in the parking lot. Um, this lot and a small 
parking lot off the shore and keeping it just in curb cut, we can fit three cars here with one one being handicap accessible if we have a space for turnout. If someone drove in and found that they were in the wrong place, they could turn around and get out even if the lot was full. Um, and here, enough spaces that was down on since 37 spaces um, with two handicap spaces here. A uh, new walkway that comes into the a new entrance, terrace along the side so that the coffee hour filter out onto the outdoor space. And this is the, the, the nursery play area that's fenced and um, hedge. Another entrance to the lower level here. We're actually seeing a net decrease in impervious surface um, because of the loss of a lot of the pavement. And what other reason? That was, that was it. This was the main, major reason was losing all of this pavement in this area. So we're able to see a net decrease in impervious surface. Um, you, you have you have a whole series of plans before you for erosion control and how to plan handle stormwater and the, the note from the Portland Water District and the review kind of thing. I don't know if you want me to go through that. Is there any interest in hearing that plan? I'm comfortable with the town engineers preview. Good. <laughs> um, we have those plans tonight here too. We also have the the lighting plan um, rendered this so we can see the, the we have added the four fixtures in the parking lot that cast their light on the shore road, the, sorry, the Oakhurst Road side that cast it towards the parking lot and are shielded from the, the residents view. And then the two fixtures in the lot that spread light evenly there. And then a couple of smaller fixtures on the walkway and then there's some fixtures on the building and that's all in the package as well. Um, we are we are formally requesting I believe three waivers. The the memorandum from Maureen said two. We um, we have stormwater calculations. We're requesting a waiver for that because of the um, net loss of impervious surface area. And I think the town engineer has recommended that that's a viable waiver if you're in favor of that. Um, the soil survey, we're asking for a waiver from that because we know that we're going to have to do test pits or a geotechnical survey before we begin construction, especially with the ledge profile. And we may even be starting that shortly, but we just we wanted to, we thought that the soil survey might be overkill at this point. And then we we're also requesting a topographic information of neighboring sites be waivered and provided you with a, a um, aerial photograph that shows the neighboring sites. And, we, and the reason for uh, asking for a waiver is that we believe there'll be no, no impact on the neighboring sites by this property. So that, that shouldn't be an issue. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Or questions other. from the board. Nancy, go right ahead. <clears throat> Um, as I understand it, for the 10 o'clock service, you are providing 37 parking spaces, and that will be sufficient. Is that correct? 37 spaces on site. Um, on site. On site. Now, might there be an overflow on Easter and Christmas and have to park along Oakhurst Row, too? There may be, yes. Um, you're... you're um, your remarks suggest that there are two services on there Sunday. There are two services. One is at 10, and the other one is at? 8 o'clock. Oh, 8 o'clock. But the 10 o'clock is the favorite. Yeah, yes. In the 10 o'clock service, we have about 140 people at the 10 o'clock and about 40 to 50 at the 8 o'clock. So that there is a part of the overflow situation in the 10 o'clock. <coughs> And do you sometimes park along the street? There is at the present time. Of course, this is the last time we currently see Mr. Bonoff, could you please join your engineer at the podium so that can be recorded on tape, please? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, 
Yes, Mr. Emery. Uh, but before we proceed further, I don't mean to disrupt the proceedings, but the issue before us right now is whether or not this is a complete application. And Correct. And it seems we're getting into uh, substantive review of the application. <clears throat> Should we not proceed on the issue of completeness and then get into questions? I agree. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Further questions or comments in regards to completeness of the application? <clears throat> on the, uh, Mr. Chairman, on the, on the financial aspects, is the is uh, involved or is this uh, uh, completely uh, local, the improvements, uh, the money? This would be completely local. Uh, there is no diocese uh, involved. In Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Parkers? I'd like to make a motion. A uh, motion for the board to consider. Um, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of St. Albans Church for site plan review for a proposed addition for a new parish house located at 88 Shore Road be deemed complete. Second. <clears throat> Second by Mr. Emery. <clears throat> Further discussion by board members? Mr. Emery. Uh, I agree with the waivers um, that, the, that the applicant has requested. I just ask that, for, for instance, in the stormwater, that there be a description of the proposed stormwater system. There may be. I haven't looked at it in great detail yet, so that we understand the impacts. We may not have all of the numbers pre and post, but it's, it's still important to have a good description of uh, how it's being channelized and where it's going. Thank you, Tom. Further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> now that we have a completed application, is there any discussion as to whether as to regards to the public hearing? I couldn't hear you. <clears throat> We now have a completed application, and we now have to make a decision on whether a public hearing will be held. I think we should have a public hearing. Mm -hmm. I agree. Thank you, Nancy. Tom? Mm -hmm. Unanimous? Yep. Would somebody like to make a motion? <clears throat> Steve? Uh, be it for further order that the application be tabled to the regular July 20th, 1999 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. One moment, please, Maureen. Just, just so I may interject, the motion you've just read is to table the discussion on this project for the night. Certainly you can decide to hold a public hearing, but you may want to determine whether or not you want to continue the discussion that Ms. Masterton started a little earlier. Um, you can, now that you've <coughs> deemed to complete, talk about the substantive nature of the application before you actually table it and schedule the public hearing for next month. Okay, let me revise my motion, then. Um, let's see, uh, be it further order that um, at the regular July 20th, 1999 meeting of the Planning Board, a public hearing shall be held. Thank you. Do I have a second? I have a, a suggestion that we hold that motion until after we have the okay. discussion. Do you temporarily withdraw your motion, Steve? That's fine. Okay. The application is still open for discussion. Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> May I get back to the parking situation? Since you were so rudely interrupted. Since I was so rudely interrupted. <laughs> um, I forget the figure <laughs> now. Is it 37 uh, parking spaces? The proposal is for 37 parking spaces. And currently in the lot as laid out here, there are about 25 parking spaces. And that means that there is some overflow parking on the current 10 o'clock <clears throat> services uh, on Oakhurst Road adjacent to the parking lot. All right. Does that cause any problems? Uh, I, to my knowledge, we've never had any complaints from the neighbors uh, or from passing, uh, you know, uh, drivers. So I, I don't think it, and it's a short period of time because it's from a quarter of 10 till 11.15. So there's about an hour and a half to around 45 minute period where there would be cars possibly parked on Oakhurst Road. Uh, at the 8 o'clock, there's no problem. Everyone that parks in the lot or 
that currently there would be some parking on the internal driveway, but that would be well covered under the parking lot design. And um, you don't any have any hopes for increasing the congregation. I mean, you you're not planning on on increasing the numbers. <laughs> I don't think I'd like to. I'd like to say that wasn't. I'm sure you. Would. Our our, uh, our enrollment, if you will, is fairly flat over the last five years, uh, and so we don't see any a great increase in terms of the number of families who belong to the parish. Uh, we'd be happy if we saw you know 10 percent increase over a three-year period. Okay, that's reasonable. <laughs> also, I didn't mention now, but I mentioned in the workshop that we did have a meeting with the neighbors, all of the ones that would have been noticed for this this event, and they were very supportive of the application. And that question, the only piece that question that came up in regards to that was, would it would it mean now that more people are parking up here? Would it push some of this apart with the entrance here? Would it push more of it into the neighborhood? But then there was no real conclusion or sense that that was a good or bad thing. It was just brought up of wouldn't that happen? So I would be more worried that you, the excess overflow parking would push down into Shore Road and that kind of dangerous corner at the end of Oakhurst. With the main entrance up here, it's more likely that it would do the other. Here's the, the main entrance. Most people are going to come through here on Sunday because this is the way into the church before you, you come in through the back. You can't really come in comfortably through the front without being a spectacle. And then if you did, I suppose a miracle happened and you doubled your membership practically overnight. Um, you could expand that parking lot, but you would have to blast, as you say. It would, be, it would be very difficult because it's a huge ledge outcropping. It's probably 10, 10, 12 feet high. It's like a little mountain. But the only real area for expansion would be down on the front lawn where the present parish hall is. And I, think and I can understand why you don't want to do that. <coughs> Steve, um, at the workshop, you mentioned that the church had was undecided but thought <clears throat> in the future that maybe the former rectory might be sold. Um, it seems to me the only way to get to the rectory right now is through the parking lot. That's right. So mm -hmm. that would, would seem to me that would sort of preempt selling that property unless you installed another driveway somewhere to access that property. I'm, I'm sorry? What? Unless there was another driveway that led to the former rectory, it seems to me it would be a difficult way to get to the, that property if, you, if it were to be sold. The, you either, either need to put another driveway from Shore Road or <clears throat> something, I don't know quite how you do it, in the back, you know, separate from the parking lot. We, um, we looked at a couple of options on that, and if you were to come up the side of the lot from Shore Road, it's again, it's, it's steep and very ledgy. You can see the topo in here goes from about 46 to un undesignated, probably, about, probably, probably a 20-foot drop from there, so it would be very difficult to get the driveway along that side. What we have proposed is an easement across the parking lot for whoever we're to purchase this, so there's a potential easement for that access. But you are, are right, it's not the same as a driveway. <coughs> Yeah, you know, I, I guess just sort of a, a word uh, of advice <clears throat> that would, I would think, severely diminish the market value of that piece of property if that's what the only access. Um, it just maybe it is. It would be much wiser to have another way into that property. Can I answer? Go right ahead, please. Um, Mr. Emery asked about the water flow and we have in the package the rain analysis mm -hmm. by Pink of Angria that answers that yep. in pretty good detail. 
Mr. Chairman. Mr. Emery. Um, I have some observations, and um, I'm not sure how pertinent they are to the specific details of the application or whether or not the board uh, and the decision-making process of the board, but it's, uh, there's many, many ways of skinning a cat, and ultimately when we're dealing with projects like this, the building committee and the architect and the landscape architect and engineers are working together, and presumably what we see presented to us are, is, a, is a process but it, it's, re, it's a result of that process. An observation I have is that it, it seems unusual to have a church, and I'm not going to use any of the ecclesiastical nomenclature if that's the right term, but you have a, the main church that exists now, and beside that church, parallel to it, is, a, is an addition that's a, indeed larger than the existing church. And I guess it's an old-fashioned concept that I have, but when I think of the main portion of the church, I think of the major part of the church, and that additions that support that church should somehow not uh, overwhelm the existing structure. And a couple of ways I see that, that happening is one is at least at one facade the addition steps back from the main facade of the existing building or turns at an angle to it so it, at least if it has more square footage it somehow differentiates itself in, in line. Um, there's nothing I believe in our site plan ordinance that, that says what I'm getting at is, is uh, any reason not to approve the project, and I'm simply I'm not saying that that's where I'm headed with this. But I think it would be interesting to hear why the addition, for example, if one's traveling toward Portland uh, or South Portland on Shore Road, the addition would appear. It may not, but it appears as though it might block the what had traditionally been the Shore Road elevation of the of the building. Um, uh, In our, our, our initial approach to this uh, was to take the parish hall and to physically move it and move it across here. And so it would run at right angles to the axis of the church along Shore Road. Uh, and uh, we would add a, an intervening a narthex, which would be a link building, if you will, to connect the two together. The result was uh, that we had a, a building that looked somewhat institutional. People refer to it as in the, the architectural concept as looking like a motel. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was a lot of concern, I think, within the parish and some of the neighbors about the appearance of this. Uh, thinking that we did not really have a, if you will, a saleable concept for the parish, we went back to the, uh, to the architect, Chris Glass, and then supported by Nancy. Uh, and took a look at could we integrate it in more closely with the church. Uh, the requirements that we have in terms of parish hall space, more classroom space, more office space we currently have, meant that we ended up with a square footage that did in fact make it appear that it is larger than the church. The current church uh, has a capacity of uh, 220 to 230 people in terms of that. And that's twice a year that we ever approached it on that. So we had no need for a larger church, but we did have a need for more space uh, in a parish hall than currently exists in this building. It should be noted that the, the spaces that exist, the classrooms, are, are really substandard. They're mm -hmm. like 8 by 10 for 15 kids. It's just pretty awful. Is it conceivable based on your fundraising uh, success? Um, and I know you're in the miracle working business to pick up on a <laughs> comment that Nancy made earlier, um, that this footprint might change depending upon um, how much money you raise? That's a possibility. We have uh, fundraising consultants that are working now on a feasibility study as to how much we could raise. Uh, with Nancy and with Wright Ryan, who are going to be our construction managers, we're looking at cost reduction uh, opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, and it might mean some possible reduction in the, in the footprint, but I would say not significant. Thank you. Nancy. Thank you. Um, as I haven't got this plan right under my nose at the moment, but as I recall, there were four Sunday school rooms. Is that correct? I don't remember. We didn't. Um... Yeah, there are. Four. Oh, in the new plan. I'm sorry. Yeah, the new plan. I think there are five Sunday school rooms. There are five. Four, yeah. 
Is that going to be enough for well, we your have, classes? We have two, uh, in, the, in the, this plan, we have two uh, meeting rooms mm-hmm. that could be used as classrooms mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. because they mm-hmm. wouldn't, okay. wouldn't be a use for them on, on Sunday as meeting rooms. Mm-hmm. There is also a conference room, library, chapel that's uh, off the rector's office, and that could be also. So we could add an additional three rooms. Uh, and, and the area that you had for the nursery school yes. could also be used for It could also be used for, for, for babies and yeah, for tots. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and that would be adequate for your purposes. Yes. How many kids do you have in your Sunday school? Well, the Sunday school and now uh, the total enrollment is uh, almost 70. Uh, normal uh, participation or normal attendance would probably be more 45 to 50. Now so that's you could up. put grades together like yes. second and that third. Yes, that would be uh, that would be essentially K or, or nursery school through mm-hmm. me. Thank you. I, uh, yes, Tom. I'd just like to follow up on uh, where Nancy was headed with this parking issue. Uh, I I don't know why. I mean, I don't know what it is that I find uh, interesting about going by churches on Sunday and seeing cars parked along the streets. I guess maybe it's the the fact that the church is a full and I'm not in one, or the fact that um, it's such an efficient use of quiet, that streets are generally quiet that time of day. Um, What is the capacity of the the church versus uh, the current enrollment? And uh, let me... Stated another way, how much growth could you uh, have before you would reach capacity in the existing church? Uh, in the existing church, uh, I would say we'd have to see 50 to 60 percent growth. As I say, we, we average, uh, well, over the last five years, the average is 150 to 160 in total. Uh, that's 110 to 120. I was in off a little bit before. 110 to 120 people attending the 10 o'clock service and 30 to 40 at the 8 o'clock. So the church will, will handle uh, 220 to 230. That was going to be my next question. If indeed, for whatever the miracle occurred and the population doubled, the congregation doubled, um, would it not be possible then to, to uh, distribute them among the services or between the services? I would say that would be the logical thing mm-hmm. to do. would go to a third service yeah. uh, to, and as you say, spread out the... Uh, I think the, um, one of the significant uh, things that we might ask the applicant in terms of potential traffic impact on Shore Road would be to look at the issue of uh, whether or not the signage along Shore Road and keeping safe sight distances coming out of um, Oakhurst Road and looking to the right. Because Shore Road is fairly wide. You have that curve right but before, <clears throat> that bad yeah. curve yeah. right before I find that the difficult turn coming out of Oakhurst on the shore road is looking south to your left, but there is an obstruction. Yeah. That. Yeah. So the, the visibility at the two, to the or, I'm, I'm sorry, to the south going towards uh, Fort Williams is easier because there's a low wall there and no obstruction. But there must be times, I don't know if it's Easter Sunday or whether it's large weddings that may have been held, there must have been times, and I think I've seen times where there has been parking in front of the church along Shore Road. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, occasionally, again, the Christmas, Easter kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I think most people feel uncomfortable about parking on Shore Road because of the yeah. traffic and the speed of the traffic, but there are on those occasions. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Nancy. Are you still going to accommodate the AA group? Yes. And that our- must generate a lot of traffic, parking. Uh, yes, but I understand that their meetings are, you know, 40 to 50 people would be the, would be the max. Uh, we have other, we would like to encourage other, we've had to turn away other groups because we didn't have the capability or capacity. Uh, for example, the Girl Scouts had approached us a couple of years ago. About that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this new design would enable us to have both small meeting rooms and have a, a major facility for larger groups.
Assuming we're on TV, I guess the only thing we can say in terms of the neighborhood, I would really encourage the neighbors to come to the public hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they will be noticed, and yeah. that really provides the, the planning board with the direct input or, or through letters. Thank you, Tom. Any other questions you would like to use the time we have this evening where we're on time for once? I'd like to clear up before we proceed on? Very well. Steve, would you like to repropose your motion? You can get to find it now. <clears throat> it's here somewhere. <laughs> would you like mine? Now you can read it as it's written. <clears throat> uh, be it for further ordered that the application be tabled to regular July 20th, 1999 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Nick. Any discussion? All those in favor? I'd like to poll the planning board to see if a sidewalk is necessary. I know it's a site I've visited on numerous occasions. And I'm sure every one of us has driven by it a couple thousand times since we've resided here in town. Been to weddings there. <laughs> Been to weddings there and funerals there. Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts. <laughs> Hearing none, there will be no sidewalk. Thank you for coming in this evening. Last item on the agenda, Town Farm District Zoning Amendment. A request by the Town Council to advise on the proposed Town Farm District Amendment to the Zoning Ordinance and the amendment to the Zoning Map, Section 19-10-3, Zoning Amendment Public Hearing. Would you like to begin, Maureen? Certainly. Um, the town farm, the proposed town farm district is uh, a creation of uh, three different committees and uh, Planning Board Member Tom Emery was, was chair of, I think, at least two of those committees. Um, but it's a proposal to create a new district called the Town Farm District, and that district would be located on the upland forced portion of the Town Farm uh, on both sides of Spurwink Ave, on the west side to the wetland edge, and also extending from the right-of-way on Sh Spurwink Ave to the east 100 feet. Uh, the permitted uses in that district are consistent with what was recommended from the Town Farm Study Committee. Uh, the intent is to create a district where uh, that land would be protected as uh, open space, where uses such as single-family residential are not permitted at this time. Are there any questions? Mr. Emery, do you have anything to add where you've been on the... No, working we've committees had that brought it to this workshop point, and uh, had some lengthy discussion. Uh, let me just say that I think it's one of the most important uh, parcels in, in the history of the community, and uh, has, will have one of the greatest impacts on open space for the next many, many years. Nancy, please. Well, I looked at this some time ago, and I made a couple, couple of <clears throat> notes. Um, <clears throat> in the second paragraph. Uh, where it says the land is undeveloped, open space, comprised of rolling fields, treed ridges, ridge lines, and the Spurwink River and Spurwink Marsh, period. The purpose of this district is to recognize the special nature of the town farm as an area. Um, oh, I, I, I wondered why you didn't interject after recognized the special nature. The word protect. Most did you discuss that? Nancy, the most current version did add and protect. Oh, it did? Yes. Okay. All right. That's why. That's I think that was one of our additions at workshop, wasn't it? Yep. Thought so. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Did we did, did go right ahead, a public talk. hearing yet? Excuse me? Did you open the public hearing yet? No. Would you like me to? We no do we we normally comment after the public hearing, is okay. that correct? 
I'll declare open the public hearing. <laughs> Anybody who wishes to speak, speak, please come to the podium and identify themselves. <clears throat> My name is Bob Danielson. I'm with the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. We participated in the committees um, that dis distinguished the uh, zoning, and we're very much in favor of this. We believe that the town uh, can do a great service to its people by preserving this land through this zoning, and we very much support it. Thank you. What did you say your name was? Bob Danielson. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Any further comments from the public? I declare the public hearing closed. It's always beneficial to have former chair people on the board with you <laughs> to help you with these housekeeping duties. <laughs> Tom, go right ahead. Are you asking for a motion? No, I'm just asking what else I forgot. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't put me in that. Uh, that <laughs> Nothing that I know of, Mr. Chairman. Um, may I make, make a motion? Go right ahead, please. Motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the materials and facts presented, the Town Farm District Zoning Ordinance and Zoning Map Amendments be recommended to the Town Council for adoption. Second. Further discussion by board members? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. <clears throat> Nothing further to come before the board. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved. moved by Ms. Parker, second by Mrs. Masterton. To adjourn. All those in favor? Thank you very much. <laughs>